Hi, this is Mr. Songer with you, and welcome to the uh, makeup lesson for seventh grade. And this is lesson number six for first trimester. And this is a lesson in critical listening. And I'm actually going to not have you play anything for this lesson. You don't have to uh, go and watch another YouTube video. Uh, you don't even have to do a recording for this video. What I'd like you to do is, after this video, I'd like you to write a paragraph of the important points that I've covered in this video. So again, the topic for this video is critical listening. You all have a solo that you're working on for your playing test, and you all have band music that you're preparing for your concert. And one important way you get better at being a musician is being able to listen to the songs that you are preparing so that you know how they're supposed to sound and you get some ideas about things that you can do in your playing to make them sound better. So I have six points I'm just going to go through fairly quickly and I'll just kind of talk a little bit about each one so that next time you get a chance to listen to the solo that you are preparing um, or one of your band songs, um, you can listen critically and then apply it to your playing. And by the way, most of our band music, most of our, um, in fact all of our band music, um, some of your solos are pretty readily available on YouTube. All you got to do is go on YouTube and search and, and look them up and listen. Okay, So here's six steps for you. Um, first of all, listen to tone, sound quality. The number one thing on any instrument is producing a good sound. Um, I can handle a few wrong notes if you have a beautiful sound. Um, I'd rather hear that than somebody who hits all the notes and rhythms perfectly, but their sound isn't very good. Think about the great singers that you like to listen to, and then think about the singers that drive you nuts. Um, a lot of it is based on their sound, the sound of their voice, and instruments are the same way. So trying to produce a good sound um, is great. Listening um, to other people's sounds is the way, one way that you get a great sound. Number two, listen to rhythms. A lot of times um, you'll be working on a song for band or your solo and you won't be able to figure out a rhythm because it's really tricky. Um, it's hard to read. Um, one of the best ways to learn how a rhythm goes is to listen to somebody play it. Um, so when you're listening, listen to the rhythms, uh, follow along in your music and hear those rhythms so you understand how they go. And then maybe hopefully next time you see those rhythms in other songs, you'll understand them and be able to play them. The third thing is listen to the melody and the chordal structure of the music. Um, just listen to, you know, how the song sounds as far as, you know, you, you play your part within the band. Listen to how it fits in with the rest of the group. If you're listening to your solo, listen to how that melody fits in with the piano part that goes with it, if there's a piano part that goes with it. And, and that will help you hear it in your head. I always say, if you can hear the melody in your head, if you can hear what you're going to play in your head before you play it, you've already won half the battle because you know how it's supposed to sound. Okay, So listen to that melody. Listen to what's going on behind it and the chords behind it. Fourth thing is listen to articulations and dynamics. A lot of times those are things that we forget to do when we play music. But when you listen, listen to how soft and how loud things are and the contrast between the two, the crescendos and decrescendos. Uh, things like forte pianos are really cool to listen to. And then also articulations. Listen to how some things are really short, some things are slurred and connected and accented. And hear all those things so you can get an idea of how much emphasis you need to place on following those articulation markings. The fifth thing is musicality and phrasing. Music is more than just playing the right notes and rhythms and dynamics and articulations. It's about making it sound musical. You know, some songs sound beautiful, some songs sound sad, some songs are scary, some songs are tense. There has to be something about the music that you're doing to make it sound like that. So when you listen, See if you can figure out what is it about this music that's making it sound with that emotion. Um, and then along with that is the phrasing. Listen to how people will go a long time on one breath, usually, to make something sound really musical. The last thing is then applying the first five things to your playing. So when you are actually practicing you are actually thinking about what you heard when you listened. You're thinking about the tone and how that rhythm went and how to play the dynamics and articulations and where to take a breath and how that melody should sound. You're thinking about all of those things when you're playing. So 
again, like I kind of said earlier, if you've already heard the song and you know how it's supposed to go, that's going to help you play it better. So I would challenge you, in addition to writing this paragraph for me and turning it in of the six things I just talked about, go and listen to your solo. Go and listen to one of our band songs. The Star Spangled Banner is an easy one to listen to. Stars and Stripes Forever. Sing, sing, sing. And listen to how musical they make those pieces sound. That's it. Have a great day.